okay so by now we have a very much clear idea about what is a software architecture what are software architectural views what is software architecture document and what are different types of views and what we we saw a, a list which was not exhaustive list uh, which was mentioning different types of views so the logical view is actually the conceptual organization of the software in terms of most important layers uh, the subsystems packages frameworks classes and interfaces so you are actually going to highlight the main uh, layers subsystem packages the classes or interfaces that your system uses with the help of a logical view uh, so with every type of view i will also explain that how you can visualize that view so you can visualize or in fact create that view because as i told you that a view would be uh, consisting of two parts which is the diagram and the text so for diagrammatic purposes you can uh, visualize that view with the help of package class and interaction diagrams then comes the process view so process view is mainly focusing on the processes and threads very quickly uh, and all the processes or threads or multi-threading concepts that we are uh, implementing or using or intending to use in our system would be there in this view and they could be visualized with the uml class and interaction diagrams uh, and by using the uml process and thread notation so you remember that we when we talk about the uh, interaction diagrams and class diagrams we said that we can also represent the processes and threads and then in the deployment view we will be telling the physical deployment of the system so it's much more like the deployment diagram uh, and the communication diagram which uh, which we talked about so it will it will let you know the uh, deployment or physical arrangement of the of the nodes and their physical network configuration between them and definitely for representing that we can use the deployment diagrams the data view will be focusing on the data part so how the data is flowing normally we know that data flow diagrams are used for this purpose but this data view not only shows you the data flow rather it can show you the data schema uh, the mapping of the schema from objects to data and from data to objects and so on uh, it can also show you the stored procedures and triggers which you might have used or intending to use so to to represent that you can visualize it with the uml class diagrams uh, where you can represent your class in terms of uh, uh, the the table of the data and that can that can have attributes only instead of having the methods uh, and data flow can also be represented with the help of uml activity diagrams if you remember when we talked about the activity diagrams i mentioned about the data flow diagrams there uh, and both of them can be used to show the flow whereas activity diagrams are more powerful uh, more rich in notation and they can also show the flow of process in addition to the flow of data the security aspect of your system for example which protocols or which security protocols are actually used for communication between the components of your system can be shown with the help of the security view so like you are you using any http authentication or any database authentication and so forth and of course that security perspective is there when we are uh, talking about communication between the components and that communication is used or shown in the deployment and communication diagram so you can visualize the security view with the help of uh, the deployment diagram one interesting view is the implementation view and implementation view uh, actually shows you the actual source code it shows you the executables and so forth the executable view in fact sorry guys the implementation view actually shows you the deliverables and it also shows you the things that create the deliverables so basically the deliverables could be uh, the the executable files they could be the dlls the libraries the jar files for example they are called the deliverables which are actually delivered and the things that create those deliverables are the source code the flowchart 
the pseudocodes, the algorithms. So if you really want to give a high level idea of what is happening there in the implementation part, you can use the implementation view. And then that's very obvious that the implementation view and the implementation model is all of the stuff including the web pages, DLLs, executables, libraries, any source code, any packages, any jar files that you might be using. So the implementation view is basically a summary description of the organization of all of these deliverables. Okay, uh, so how you're organizing the source code, how and in what way the DLLs and web pages are linked with each other. Uh, to express the uh, implementation view, you can express that in terms of text and uh, you can take the help from the package and component diagrams. Of course, packet diagrams show the arrangement and structuring of the packages and the sub packages. And guys, finally, the development view shows you the setup of development environment and how the things are organized. For example, how your directories are organized. What is, for example, when you're creating a project, uh, what different project directories are you using and for which purpose, which project directory is used. Uh, then you can also specify how and in what scenario you are using your uh, test runs. So are you using unit testing? Uh, integration testing or and so on and finally you also show the version control in your development view and that version control is that which type of version control mechanism are you using uh, for this current project so again that's very obvious you can see that these things are actually going to help the newly coming person joining person in your project and he will be able to learn a lot of things if he go, if we go through this uh, software architecture document and guys lastly the, the use case view so the purpose of use case view is to represent the summary of most architecturally significant use cases guys once again we have the use case document please remember but this architectural view uh, is going to represent or highlight only those use cases which are significant uh, in terms of the non-functional requirements in fact only those views which are significant and important so uh, they are only going to show those use cases uh, that by their implementation illustrate the significant architectural coverage that means they are interacting with most of the parts of the system so for example the use case that we have been seeing in a lot of examples the process sale use case it seems to be architecturally significant and we can we can add that in our use case view so for the visualization purposes of the use case view we will be using the use case diagrams and the interaction diagram so well we have talked enough about different views uh, you should be thinking about how uh, the software architecture document would look like so guys there is no very extraordinary or special template for that but uh, usually you can arrange your document by simply saying the architectural representation where you can tell the reader in advance that how your document is going to be arranged and uh, then you can simply keep on presenting your views like uh, the process view and the other views uh, the deployment view the logical view and so on and make sure that for every view you are going to have two parts which is called the diagram and the text so you keep on representing that in your document one by one so as an example here you can see a, a software architecture document from the next gen point of sale system and that document is having the introduction for the architecture representation it says uh, this sad summarizes the architecture from multiple views these include logical view data view process view and so on in addition this uh, sad references the supplementary specification so again i'm just telling what this document is all about and what different details you will find in those documents when we talk about the architectural factors, uh, you are actually going to tell uh, the user or the reader that what different parts are important for this document. And those parts are represented in terms of the factor table. You can go and uh, read the section 33.6. In chapter number 33, uh, subsection 6, you will see a sample factor table. And we can simply 
modify that factor table once again that's not very hard and fast to use the same templates well now here you can see one example of a logical view again remember logical view was the uh, organization and structuring of the layers the classes packages sub packages of our system so this is one example where I'm arranging our, our, our system into layers including the UI layer uh, the domain layer and the technical services layer and every layer has some uh, further some 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 packages those packages are interacting or depending upon other packages and so on so this is one possible possible graphical representation of the logical view of our system and then in the text part of the uh, logical view uh, in our sad document I can have some discussion and motivation so for example I can say that uh, a classic layered architecture is used uh, no application layer of session objects was in, in, inserted between UI and domain layers as the system operations are simple without much workflow coordination uh, the primary controller receiving the system operation request from the UI layer is the registered class so now I'm telling the reader that these are some important aspects and in my uh, this short and brief and important view remember that one minute elevator discussion so I need to highlight that here and then I can have the deployment view text where I'll be explaining what I actually mean in the deployment view so I will definitely add the uh, discussion and motivation in the very similar manner so for example I can say that uh, the text calculator is centralized rather than uh, replicated on each POS terminal because of its high licensing cost now for, now I'm actually explaining the details related to the deployment that for example I'm not placing the text calculator on every POS terminal it is centrally located and every POS terminal will be accessing it so this thing is a purely related to the deployment aspect of the system and then of course I can actually display that uh, in terms of the UML and for that purpose I will use the UML deployment diagram where I can actually show the uh, the organization and structuring of the nodes and their interaction with each other and uh, then I can also have the data view where I will be explaining the data flow scenario for the pre process sale use case because uh, as we mentioned that the most important use cases must be highlighted so we will be adding those in our data view so I'm expl explaining the flow of that use case and then discuss that in the text and in the use case view with the help of the sequence diagram I can explain uh, the steps and scenarios uh, which are actually being taken place in that particular use case and then finally I can discuss that in the text so guys that will be it for now for further details you can go and read chapter number 39 from applying UML and patterns good luck <laughs>